Her sisters and brothers, thank you for being here this week. As ever, we have a fabulous guest. This is our second week in a row to try because Carmen Mixa and I had huge technical difficulties last week. Carmen has a podcast called Seeds of Sunshine that she produces with her daughter. I was so lucky to be her guest in recent history. So check out my Facebook author page and you'll see the link to that. When I met her, I knew she was someone I wanted to have on this show. Carmen moved here decades ago from Romania. I had one of my, gosh, someone I adored when I volunteered for hospice who stayed around forever. Like, I think we saw each other seven years before she eventually passed. But her stories of Romania made me realize, wow, what a different world and a beautiful place I'd like to see one day. Carmen made this brave move from Romania. She lives in Sacramento, California, and earned advanced degrees in writing. She's published an anthology, a book of poetry in recent months during the pandemic. I mean, when you think about it, writing is not that easy. Publishing a book, definitely not the easiest thing. But if English is not your first language and you're able to do that, man, that's fantastic. She's a marathon runner. During the pandemic, she taught herself to rap. Proud mother of two. I think you're gonna have a blast with Carmen Mixa. And she has so many interesting storylines of persistence. I'm not sure which one she'll share with us today, but I am looking forward to it. So don't forget I'm at lameredith.com. You can find recent podcasts I've been on. I also got to be a part of Jelly Smack and women telling their stories on their Facebook page, which I loved. Right now it is, today's date is April the 22nd and my youngest daughter just turned 35. I thought she was turning 34. Don't tell her I told, I said that, but anyway, 35 years old at, in the last couple of days. So exciting, scary, weird. And as ever, I still think, man, what am I going to be when I grow up? <laughs> so anyway, doing lots of writing and rewriting on my novel, as well as a couple of anthology uh, essays I'm working on right now, as I have more time at home lately and picking up some extra contract work. Hope all is going well in your world and do as ever. Let me know how you liked Carmen. I know you are going to love her. Remember, Persistence You has more than 150 episodes backlisted. So whether you're looking at healing in your own life and listening to stories of people who've done it through different mechanisms, maybe that's not the right way to say it, but you know, whether some people use EMDR, some people go to talk therapy, some people join a support group, there's lots of stories on Persistence You about healing, about never giving up, and about how we can increase our own resilience, which we need. It's a hurting world these days. So yes, do listen to the backlist. Thank you and see you in a second day. Carmen Mixa, thank you so much for being on Persistence You today and for powering through. We both had trouble last week. So wonderful to have you on my show. And I was so honored to be on Seeds of Sunshine as well recently. Yes, thank you so much, Lisbeth, for having me. I am deeply honored and very happy to be here. And I just love the way we both connected. We felt those seeds of sunshine uh, between us. And thank you again for having me on your wonderful podcast. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for saying so. Carmen, I love to hear people's stories behind the story. Like, what is the a foundational story in your life that just changed everything? Oh, that's a great question. Um, and I know that we all have multiple stories, right? Yes. But when I look back, and especially after many years pass, you really are able to pinpoint it better. For me, it happened, Lisbeth, at the age of 16. I grew up in communist Romania. And I remember I used to live in the dorms. I left home when I was 14, to go to a specialized high school where I was able to study English, philosophy, and history. So, you know, I specialized in that. 
And I remember talking to my girlfriends, you know, late at night, instead of going to bed, we were like, how would it feel to, to have our country free, like United States? Mm -hmm. um, how would it feel to go to a concert with Michael Jackson? We were crazy about Michael Jackson at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then sure enough, um, the winter break came. Um, it was um, uh, 1989, Lisbeth, when the uh, revolution happened in Romania. And my father and I used to listen together to Free Europe, um, uh, a radio station that oh. told the truth because we weren't uh, uh, allowed to know the truth in communism. You know, communication was whatever they wanted to share with us. So my dad and I literally listened about this Romanian revolution that started in the university town and the high school town where I studied, which is called Timisoara. It was the most progressive town in Romania at the time and still is. And, and then we realized that it's coming in our small hometown. And I told my father, daddy, we need to go out in the streets and, and fight for freedom. He goes, well, I don't know. And then my mom comes and she goes, you know, I could lose my job. And I go, nobody cares, mom. We need to fight for freedom. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> <Government. laughs> so we did go, Lisbeth. My father and I were out there in the streets for three days, uh, knowing that there was the risk. They were shooting at the uh, demonstrants, you know, at the time, but not in our small hometown as much as in the big cities. So we were out there peacefully demonstrating and, you know, shouting down with communism, freedom. And it was just such a liberating moment when I truly understood that in order to live a free life and to have changes in your lives, you have to be part of a bigger movement. I like that. You need community and to have that common ground, it sounds like. Yes, yes. Because you could say, well, I wouldn't make a difference. There are thousands of people in the street. But it's like we know it's that ripple effect, right? You you throw a pebble and those are the ripples that form in the water. And, and I knew that we all had a voice and that we all had to be out there fighting with, um, you know, for our freedom and for our rights because we weren't allowed to speak our mind. We weren't really allowed to travel to the United States. You know, we could only go very close to Romania, travel outside. And I knew that there has to be a better way of living. At such a young age, and to have that fierce uh, sense of mission, really, it's pretty fantastic. What happened next? Well, what happened next, within a few days, the, uh, the Romanian revolution, you know, conquered communism. Um, the whole world knows that they actually executed our president. They just killed him without a trial, uh, him and his wife. Um, and then there were elections. Unfortunately, a former communist came as a socialist in power. And after that, I realized that I needed to have a different life, but not in Romania. So my boyfriend and I at the time, we had the chance to come to America and I told him, look, I'm not going to go back to Romania. We owe it to ourselves to live, to start from scratch and to, to live a, a true free life. Wow. So th did that mean that you left your whole family behind? Yes, yes. And I'm the only child, Lisbeth. But what's interesting is that my mom encouraged me. She goes, I don't want you to come back. <laughs> Oh, because she, what she meant is I want you to make a new life for yourself. And sure enough, we did, Lisbeth. And then I was able to bring my mom and uh, she has dual citizenship. We also have dual citizenship. Um, as a matter of fact, things have changed in Romania. So this summer we're able to go back and and share our culture with our daughter and she'll be able to connect with our family, you know. Oh, what a beautiful trip. I'm so glad. So she's going to be able to see all of the things that you uh, grew up with. Yes, yes. How exciting. It's so interesting that you mentioned like you needed to have, you, 
in order to have the life you wanted, you needed to have freedom, freedom of movement, of expression, all of that. I think that's something I totally take for granted. And that people who grow up in certain countries do take for granted. We think everyone has equal shot to success or to a happy life or whatever, but that's not necessarily true. That is not necessarily true. I, I mentioned before you hopped on in the introduction, I volunteered for years for hospice. And my favorite hospice patient was a Romanian woman but when she talked about leaving her home, even though she loved it, she loved the food, there was always cabbage soup making when I would visit her and some great things, but she was very glad to have left. It, left. it was very difficult. It was a difficult living where she was. And so, wow, what an exciting thing that it worked, that you made a community, you know, a kind of uh, in your support with other people, you made a difference but it was time to leave. And now it's time to show your daughter. What do you think she's going to learn from this? Well, the thing is we took her back there when she was nine years old. So it took us more than 20 years when we first went back to Romania, right? Wow. Um, and so she was only nine and she actually loved it. She met her cousins for the first time and she was able to do what I was doing in my childhood, just climb the cherry tree, pick up fresh cherries from the tree and just be out there and play, Lisbeth. It was so wonderful. And just play with the dogs, with the cats. My uh, relatives in the city that I was born, which is the northern part of Romania, they have this huge garden and it's full of fruit trees and vegetables and they have cats and dogs. And, you know, you get to really play. You don't need your phone. You don't need anything, right? Right. So she experienced that when she was nine. So now she's going to experience it again at 17. That's going to be really exciting. Yes. Really exciting. And your child, your other child is going too, correct? So Alex, my son went when he was 11. Okay. But this summer, he's not coming with us because he's working. He's at the oh. university and he wants to be serious this summer and just get more work experience because he wants to become a doctor. Um, and so that's why I went with him three weeks ago to Tokyo. We visited Japan together because I knew he couldn't come with us in the summer. Oh, that sounds like a wonderful consolation prize as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and good for you for getting an extra trip out of it. That's excellent. Yes. Oh, that's really wonderful. Well, I mentioned before, so you've done a lot of things since you've been here. I mean, you talk about landing on your feet, but tell us a little bit about some of the work journey and choices you've made and including some of your writing. Yes. Um, so basically, my passion has always been, you know, English literature, philosophy, writing. But what was funny when we came to America, I had to figure things out what I'm going to do, right? And we happened to buy our first home. And my husband said to me, wow, did you see what that real estate agent uh, do? Pretty much nothing. I did all the work. <laughs> and I go, yes. <laughs> he goes, do you think you might want to get into real estate? Because you're really good with people. You're honest. You're caring. I'm like, you know, I'm, I need to go back to school. And I don't have anything against it. I'll try it. I don't know if I'm going to like it, but I'm happy to try it. And so I did. And the fact that it's such a dynamic field and career, which is why I named my company Dynamic Real Estate, um, it just really um, made me feel very fulfilled because I work with people from all walks of life, from all cultures, um, and we all with different needs. And um it, I just got into it so well. And then I realized even after I went back to school to finish my education and get my master's degree in English, I didn't want to go back to teaching. I used to teach in Romania, English. Um, and I said, I'm going to continue with my real estate, but I'm going to do writing on the side. And during the pandemic, you know, a lot of people complained that they felt uninspired or that it, it was difficult to do certain things. For me, it was the opposite. I was like, you know, I have all this time. I really need to finish the publication of my poetry book. I was working on Morsels of Love at the time. 
And then I kept writing and I kept joining Medium and then I ended up writing essays together with authors from all over the world um, in different anthologies. And it is just so satisfying to kind of marry the business um, side of my career with the creative side, which is why I love to tell my clients, if there is a way I can make this deal work for you in real estate, it's because of my creative side. I will find a creative way for us to put this together, you know? Right. I like that. Also, it keeps you probably really satisfied at work because you're not expecting every single need in your brain to be satisfied by that one job. You have that creative outlet. There's a place for it. And it you let, let it be prominent, it seems yeah. as though. And, you know, my passion for writing and reading will always be there, you know. Right. And so I want to um, continue nourish uh, that side of my soul, which is why during the pandemic, I also created a really fun um, book club. We are called the Book Savages. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds scary. <laughs> I like it. Scary. But what that book club is actually formed 99% uh, of us are runners. So okay. we're runners and big readers. Um, we love to discuss serious books of literature from authors from all over the world. Uh, and it's been so fulfilling because we still do it on Zoom. From time to time, we meet on, in person. But it's been just so wonderful to have this project where uh, as busy as I am with my, my business, at least I know for sure that I'll read one or two books a month because one is the book club. So it makes me do it. Um, and, and it's just so wonderful to keep that side of my soul um, alive and nourished. I think that's fantastic. It clearly makes you happy. You were telling me you even picked up on rap music, but you know, <laughs> doing some of your own raps while the pandemic went forward. I, I, I don't think there are many people who could appreciate as much as you do what we can accomplish with freedom, you know? And I think that's so exciting that you take none of it for granted. What do you see in your future, Carmen? What, what are you working on next? And, and what do you want your daughter to know about if your life hadn't changed when you were 16, the life you would have been leading? Great questions, uh, uh, Lisbeth. So, you know, right now, this year, especially because we're traveling back to Romania, I'm very focused on finishing my memoir. So I'm writing a memoir about my life in Romania and also the 10 life lessons that I learned from my father, who was a watchmaker. And so the memoir will be the fact that I, I consider myself the daughter of time because my father was a watchmaker and he was so good like um, with his time, he never was rushed. He was like, oh, I know exactly when we're gonna get there. Why walk faster when I know I have enough time? <laughs> and sometimes, because I was a kid, I was like, daddy, we need to walk faster for me to get to my train. Because I was taking the train to go back to, um, to my school. Um, and he's like, oh, we have plenty of time, Carmen. There is no need to rush, you know? So he would Aww. walk slowly. And I was like, let's walk faster. <laughs> the daughter of time. I love that. Yes. Yeah, so this is my big project. Um, I really, I've been working on it for 20 years, Lisbeth, because this was part of my um, a thesis for my master's degree but it took a completely different direction after I was actually interviewed on a podcast for, for our local television station, KCRA News. And when I talked to, um, to the interviewer and we also became friends afterwards, I realized, wait a minute, I am the daughter of time. I, my memoir needs to go in a different direction and for me to share those happiness lessons that I actually learned during a more hostile environment or not mm -hmm. as nourishing, more stressful, but I learned so much. And so um, I, I want to really finish my memoir this year, Lisbeth, especially after we do the trip to Romania. There are certain details that I want to go over, you know, mm -hmm. 
That's exciting. And I feel like personally, a big trip, not any trip, but a big trip helps me, helps unlock creativity, probably jostles some things around in my brain and creates fear and anxiety, but also helps with writing. And I just can imagine, you know, it could start snapping together like Lincoln Logs. And that's very exciting, Carmen. Yes, yes. And as far as our kids go, I always, you know, teach them. Um, one of my friends was so wonderful uh, last week when we were running. I said, look at this light coming through the tree. I sent her the picture and 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 she goes, well, maybe it's you carrying your seeds of sunshine wherever you go. Oh, that's beautiful. I know. I even wrote a short form uh, about it and I quoted her and she, she joked with me. She goes, give this woman a Pulitzer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's a very humble woman, isn't she? <laughs> yes, she's a wonderful runner friend. We run together and oh. we talk about the books. She's in my book club as well. And, and sometimes we... We don't know that we all carry these seeds of sunshine with us. So I want to teach my kids that lesson and they see me, how I act around other people. And my daughter, especially, she's uh, she's quite wonderful. She goes, mom, you're just so sweet. And all my friends love you. And she's in high school. So that's not typical, right? For high school, right. I tell you that. <laughs> I love that, Carmen. I hope you have the most fabulous trip with your daughter. I'll be looking forward to hearing about how your memoir shapes up and gets published. I feel like that's a reasonable amount of time to tell a story as big as yours. Two decades? Yes, in a book of poetry that might be long, but I feel like this memoir, it's worth waiting for. So I'm yeah. excited. Where can people learn more about you and how what you know how your work is shaping up, whether it's real estate or writing or whatever. Yes, thank you for asking that. So basically, I um, I have two websites that they can go to. It's dynamicsacramentalhomes.com, and then my author website is carmenmixabooks.com. And obviously, like you, I do a podcast. They can look up Seeds of Sunshine, a mother-daughter podcast, which I do with my Sophia. And um, they can obviously find me on social media. I'm pretty big on social media. And it's Carmen Seeds of Sunshine on Instagram. And then on Facebook, Carmen Mixa. And uh, I love to connect with people from all over the country and all over the world. And if they have a question about running, life, writing, I would love to answer it. Oh, I think that's fantastic. Thank you for bringing your sunshine to Persistence U today. And I have loved getting together with you now, three times, I'm going to say. Yes. Uh, once for your podcast, twice for mine. So what a privilege. And I just thank you so much for your time, Carmen. I thank you so much. And I wish you the very best and good luck with all your writing. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.